Now, we're entering chapters 13 and 14. This is after Numbers chapter 12. Moses, humble man on the face of the earth. Chapter 13 and 14, Moses is going to send out spies into the land. And these chapters 13 and 14 are huge chapters in the Old Testament. This is like absolutely huge because they're going to go out and spy out the promised land. Remember, you guys are the nation of Israel. You guys are Jordan, Sea of Galilee, Jordan River, Dead Sea. You guys are Israel. You guys are the Mediterranean Sea. They're sending out spies from a place called Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh Barnea is down over here in the Sinai Desert. And they're sending the spies up into the promised land right to here. Well, his fellow is scratching his neck. That guy, that guy, sorry, um, but he's Hebron, okay? They're going to come up to Hebron, and they're going to get these grapes, these phenomenal Hebron grapes that are good even till this day. Um, they're going to come back carrying these grapes back from the promised land around Hebron and things. And so let's just kind of go through. There's some questions then on this spying out of the promised land. There's some questions that I want to ask of the text in, in Numbers chapters 13 and 14. First question is, can God change? Can God change? Okay. If God is perfect, how can he change? Can God change? Is God static or is God dynamic? Dynamic would have more of the sense of change. Static would have the sense that God is more fixed. He can't change and stuff. So God is, is he static or is he dynamic? What does the text say? What does the text say? If he can't change... If God can't change, is it possible for him to think or interact? How does God think or interact with people if he can't change? Is, is part of change when you go back and forth talking to people that you, you change and you interact and that kind of a thing? How is relationship possible with someone who never changes? Um, what never changes? Uh, have you ever had a relationship with a rock? Did you ever have a pet rock? And stuff. And you can talk all you want to the rock. You can, you know, pet the rock and be nice to the rock and dress the rock up and all sorts of stuff and stuff. But it's still a rock. I mean, you know what I'm saying? The rock never changes and stuff. And so after you're all done with the rock, you said the rock is still the rock and, and you've talked to the rock and it doesn't, you know, do anything. Yeah. Um, there, there was Wilson and Castaway. <laughs> now, what's that? No, I don't. Explain. Now, he's got to explain it to me now. So, okay. Wilson and Castaway. And it was a volleyball. I mean, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I you never seen Castaway? No, I never see Castaway. I was, I came, anyways. Um, I need to watch more movies. So you think I need to watch Castaway then? I need to watch you Castaway. Totally do. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll write that down and we'll, we'll watch Castaway. All right. Sorry. Okay, man, it's really bad when you miss. He's got a point, the major point, and I miss it because I haven't seen the movie. All right. How do you have a relationship with something that doesn't change, okay? It's a problem, right? I don't care what movie. If the guy never changes, it's going to be a problem, okay? So here we go. If he's dynamic, if God, you say, okay, God does, you know, interact with people. If he is dynamic, in what sense or areas is he dynamic? Is everything up for grabs? I mean, can God change everything? God gets up one morning, he says, you know something, you know, I've been good all my life, man. It's just, you know, being good is like really boring, you know, and stuff. I, I want to have an exciting day. You know, maybe, maybe I'm going to try to be bad today, you know, and I can be bad and have some excitement in my life and things. And so God decides one day, I'm going to be bad. Okay, can God do that? It, it kind of goes back to those philosoph very philosophical questions. Are there some things God can't do? Can God make a rock so big that he can't pick it up? Can God make a rock so big that he can't pick it up? And you say, wow, that's just brilliant. There must not be a God then, because God can do anything. But if he can't make a rock so big that he can't pick it up, then, then there's something he can't do. And, and yeah, do you get in the, do you understand? All it is is in the question is the contradiction embedded in the question. The contradiction's embedded in the question, so it's a, it's a dumb question is basically what it amounts to, okay? But, but can God change everything? Can God change everything about himself, or are there certain things that God can't change within himself? Okay, and how do you work with that? Does God still experience choice? Does God still, can God make a choice in the now? 
Can God make a choice now? You say, well, Hildebrandt, what does now mean for God? You know, And we were in this thing with time and God. But can God make a choice now? Or did God make all his choices before the foundation of the world? And therefore, all God's choices were made before the foundation of the world. And now he's just trucking through. I made these choices a long time ago. And so I know it's going to be this, 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 and this. And God's just going through, you know, doing what he chose a long time ago. Can God choose now? Can God choose now or were all the choices made in ages past? So these are some kind of questions that come up with this. Now, here's the story. Numbers chapter 13. Giants in the land. Was Moses wrong for sending out spies into the land? Someone once told me that Moses was wrong for sending out the spies into the land because he should have just trusted God. He should have just trusted God and went up there and took the land without sending out the spies. Why is that? That's not right, because in Numbers chapter 13, it says, the Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan. Who told Moses to send the spies out? God did. So Moses was not wrong. By the way, would Joshua send out spies himself into Jericho? You guys just read that. Joshua sent out spies, and then they went and took Jericho. So there's nothing wrong. Just because one serves God doesn't mean you have to be dumb. You know. So you send out spies to spy out the land, to see how you're going to take the territory and stuff. So this uh, God told them to send out the spies. When the spies go out, what do they see? Beautiful land, chapter 13, verses 26 and following. They go out and they see a land flowing with milk and honey. I love this phrase. Have you ever heard this phrase before, the land flowing with milk and honey? I always, get, I always get a kick out of that because when people hear the word milk, you guys think cows. Question, how do cows do in the desert? Okay, when it's talking about milk, is it talking about cow's milk? No. What kind of animals do you have in the desert? Goats. Goats. So when it's talking about milk, it's talking about goat's milk, not cow milk, goat's milk. And when it talks about honey, you guys are thinking this nice honey you pour out of the you know, jar and it's all sweet honey and stuff. Um, a lot of people think that this honey, this halav is goat's milk, davash, is, is, is honey. A lot of people think it's date jam. In other words, they take the dates and they beat it into a jam that's really sweet, we talked about before, and that this is actually goat's milk and date jam. But the problem is if you tell Americans they go up to the promised land of goat's milk and date jam. Everybody's going to say, man, I don't want to go up there. Let's stay down here and go to McDonald's, you know, <laughs> something. So anyways, but that's, that's actually probably, the honest truth is that's probably more like it, uh, goat's milk, date jam. The goat's milk for sure, because cows, you understand, you don't take cows, the deserts, um, cows are up in Bashan in the very well-watered area up there. They do, have, they do have cows, but mostly up in Bashan, yeah. Halav v'davash. It says, it says milk and honey. Now the question is, what kind of milk is it? And all I'm saying is cows, probably not, most of the milk they drink is goat's milk. And davash, which can be translated honey, can be translated honey, but it also can mean this uh, a date um, composite thing. And it may be that because they're coming out. There's a lot of palm trees. They're down at Kadesh Barnea. 